Hey guys, Dylan here, and welcome to the Making of Zenyatta Unleashed video. We're going to be going over exactly how I created the Zenyatta Unleashed animation, which took about three weeks or so. And uh, I also asked you guys some questions over on Discord and Twitter, so if you guys want to jump in on those question rounds next time, feel free to join one of those. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try to answer as many questions as I can, and we're going to go through an audio commentary. So we're going to watch the video once, and I'm going to go over what I can talk about in that short amount of time, and then I'm going to go over the questions that people asked um, afterwards. So, all right, let's go over it. So let's go ahead and watch the video first. And to start off, um, this Mercy animation was one of my favorite parts of the animation. I took a lot longer than I probably should have, and uh, it's just me in a mocap suit uh, tying my hair, trying to look cute. But I did all the hand animation and all the face animation and the hair animation uh, by hand. So the mocap was just for the body base, and then um, I worked from there. That was to speed up my workflow. Of course, you have to use mocap if you want to work as fast as I do. Um, now, for Mercy 2.0, I didn't use any mocap, so I worked pretty fast there. But for this one, it was a lot more complex and obviously a lot more per capita animation. Like each, each second, there was more animation, especially because it's a one versus one, which usually takes longer because you have more advanced animation for two characters. Now, this whole fight scene was basically the same process that I've used for my other fight scenes. I just sit there and meditate for a bit. Um, I had some Naruto references in there, in case you didn't notice. The substitution jutsu with the Kitenji plush, which, by the way, they will be shipping out soon if you guys want to get a Kitenji plush. That's uh, on Indiegogo in the link down below. So, Copperhead on Discord actually asked, how do you do the voice acting? Uh, I don't. These This conversation was actually all based on in-game voice lines just compiled together and edited to sound like they were having a conversation with each other. So, uh, the whole Zenyatta Dragon Ball Z joke actually originated from the standing up joke, which we just thought would be funny, like, hey, what if Zenyatta stood up all of a sudden as his power-up? It's like, oh, you know what would be weirder? If he just randomly started screaming, <laughs> right? He's screaming. And then, you know, from screaming, he turns into a Super Saiyan and suddenly he sprouts hair out of his bald head. And it's like, we just wanted to be as outrageous as possible. And, you know, this led to that. And we were like, okay, cool. So, um, and this shot, by the way, was meant to be uncomfortably long. So if you felt that way, then uh, good job. Um, so, yeah, actually, the Super Saiyan aura was a little bit difficult to do. It's a combination of 2D and 3D. Um, I was having a lot of trouble with that at the beginning and didn't figure out a solution until very very late into the process of the animation um oh fun fact fun fact um so like i said this this zenyatta super saiyan aura was actually very hard to do right and it's a combination of 2d 3d and the fact that i put a bunch of 2d effects on cards and then kind of spun them around real fast right now you might be wondering what the heck does that mean dylan how can you show me what that means well i can because there's a render error i left in here now if you just here we go here we go so okay so right here um right here you have uh the part where he goes down you can see the shadow of the cards that I use for the aura spinning around real fast in this frame. And um, that was that's an error. It's not supposed to be there. But I couldn't be bothered to re-render it. I may not have even noticed till the very last second. So I didn't have time. And um, yeah, you can just see it spinning there for, for maybe half a second. And uh, that's, you know, that's an example of something that's like, eh, it's not perfect, but you just got to let it fly sometimes in the interest of time. So yeah. Um... Yeah, it's just th that smoke effect, by the way, is the same smoke effect I used in the Mercy 2.0 video, but rendered out with no black smoke, but rather gray smoke. And, uh, of course, this was a JoJo reference, according to a lot of people, but I don't actually watch JoJo, so this was actually just me wanting to punch Genji multiple times with Zenyatta's arms. It just had to happen. He had so many arms. You know, Zenyatta has eight arms, and so you might as well use them all, right? Now, uh, that Genji ult right there was replacing the dragon with the scale effect, just because I didn't have time to do the dragon, so... I made that conscious decision, and uh, nobody seemed to say anything about the missing dragon. So I'm glad you guys like that effect, I assume. And um, just know for all animators out there, you can cut corners, and it will be fine. Um, the effect still turned out pretty cool, so I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah, by the way, the fact that the chat was going the wrong way, I did notice that after I uploaded it, but I had not slept that whole night. So uh, yeah, I have no excuse. I mean, that basically, I just I messed up. That was... <laughs> I messed up. Anyway, let's go ahead and take some questions now, shall we? So we had some questions from the Discord and the Twitter. Um, I asked you guys on there to ask me some questions, and you guys delivered real well. We have a lot of questions to go through, so let's just answer them one by one. So, first question, we just talked about me staying up all night. How do you stay awake at night? Coffee? Asks Patenji. Well, the answer is no, I don't actually drink any substances. All I drink is water. Um, water and soylent, and uh, maybe milk, and that's about it. So, no, I don't drink coffee. Um, I just uh, power through it. I don't stay up all night very often. How did you get these models? Uh, yeah, I downloaded them online. Blue Tiger animations actually helped me get Zenyatta. 
How did you do the action scenes? Did you use references? If so, from where? Uh, yes and no. So I do reference some shots, but most of everything, like when it, when it comes to like the actual fight, uh, like the kicks and the punches and stuff like that, I've gotten used to animating them, so I don't use reference that much. Um, and uh, I did use mocap a little bit. I did about 50% mocap for the fight. Um, and obviously, like I mocap part of Zenyatta, right? But that was, you know, obviously I'm not actually floating in the air. So a lot of editing had to be done with that. But the reference from the mocap helped a lot. So for example, uh, Zenyatta did like a double kick on Genji's back. And uh, that was me mocapping a double kick while standing, but then I would animate the other leg floating and then adjust the hip animation so that it looks like he's actually floating. I'm, I, mean, I don't always use mocap, but if I want to work fast and have good choreo at the same time, then I do want to use mocap. It's a very, very valuable resource if you know how to take advantage of it. How did you make those Zen arms appear? Yes, that's a great question. The Zen arms are actually a duplicated rigs. Actually, let me see if I can show you guys real quick. So I opened up this file here, and this is the shot where the other six arms appear, right? Yeah, so as you can see here, we actually have a duplicate rig. It's a full body rig, but it's just duplicated with just the arms attached to it. And I have that three other times. What I did was actually I scaled these rigs down to zero before this, and then scaled them back up to one. And then I had the first pose, the, very, the beginning pose here, basically be the same pose. Uh, as the original. That's basically all it is. And so a pretty simple effect, honestly. Just uh, just duplicate the rig over and parent it to the original rig. Uh, next question. How did you come up with the idea for a standing Zenyatta? Or more generally, how much time do you spend on brainstorming ideas slash pre-production? Asks Xenon. Well, the answer to that is um, me and Kelly, uh, my girlfriend, we actually do a lot of brainstorming sessions beforehand. Um, and uh, sometimes we'll just take a few minutes to be like, hey, would it be, would it be funny if blank? Would it be funny if blank? And we kind of bounce ideas off each other. And once, you know, one of them sticks where it's like, oh, hey, that was actually a really funny idea. I, I agree. Then we're like, okay, we're going to we're gonna try to incorporate this in there. So, but yeah, for the idea of the standing zenyata, that was just part of that brainstorming session because you never see a standing zenyata. The only time I've seen a standing zenyata was during like a cosplay. And, and I was like, that looks so weird and I don't know why. Uh, what was the most difficult part about making the animation? Honestly, the most, the thing I had the most trouble with was the Super Saiyan aura. I just could not figure out how to make it look good until the very, very end. It didn't look right until I brought it into After Effects. So I was really uncertain until almost the last day. What are the aspects of a rig you wouldn't be able to work without? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure my rig is terrible already. Probably IK. If a rig doesn't have IK, it's pretty screwed. What is the random giant cucumber behind Zenyatta? Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, that, sorry for the confusion, it's not that clear, but it's actually a pillow from the scene. There's several several green pillows in Hanamura, and uh, yeah, it was just there. What are your daily goals you set for yourself? And if you don't, when do you decide you've worked enough for the day? Oh, this is a good question. Um, the answer is, I don't really have a lot of daily goals except for a general rule of thumb of how happy I am with the progress. But um, in general, it relies heavily on um, me just knowing when to sleep. Because I, I work until I go to sleep, basically. Who mocapped the hair tying at the beginning? You or Kelly? Uh, the answer is me. I did the mocap for the Mercy hair tie. Um, yeah, I actually I did take an acting course back in college, which I think helped a lot for mocap and for animation. Acting is super essential for an animator if you want to do any acting shots. You need to know how to act yourself. Um, and the better you can act, the better you can mocap. A lot of animators will use themselves as reference, and so they'll act it out. Uh, which does a decent job, but they always change it up and exaggerate it. But if you want to use mocap, you have to do as good of a job as possible because you want to use that animation. So uh, it takes that up a notch a little bit. But yeah, um, refine your acting skills for that and then you'll be great. Yes, I was Kawaii Mercy for at least 20 minutes of my day. Um, I noticed you save a lot. What are the essential tips you have for someone working on an animation project like this? Yes, I do save a lot, and that's because I will not risk losing my work ever again. And I say that because I have lost work, I've gotten burned several times, and uh, you never want that to happen to you, so you want to save all the time. I save habitually now, probably every time I do something new. So I don't even notice when I save, but if you ever watch me stream, I'm sure you'll notice and be able to count how many times I've actually saved. Um, because it happens probably every five seconds or so. It's very, very often. Now, uh, an essential tip for someone working on an animation project like this is to budget your time in a way where you're like, okay, I can only give myself this long to work on something. If you do not have that timeline, that deadline, you will not finish it, pretty much. I mean, or you'll take a very long time. And uh, if you have to cut corners to reach that deadline, sometimes it's worth it. 
because a finished product is worth more than an unfinished product. Um, Vushker asks, what's the meaning of life? Well, mostly it's just to be happy and to make others happy. That is the meaning of life, and there's nothing more to it than that. Um, whatever makes you happy and makes other people happy is what you're supposed to be doing, basically. I mean, that's it's really not that complicated, guys. Um, how do you outline the scene as a whole before slash during? Do you have a definite plan before you start out, or does the idea slowly progress as you start animating? Um, the answer is yes, it's kind of in between. I have an outline basically in place of like Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Sometimes I don't have the ending set in stone, uh, and sometimes I have only the ending set in stone. It really depends on the project. But as long as I have a general outline of what I want and a way to start, then I basically just start animating. And then from there, I don't plan any of the cameras. I do all the cameras and stuff on the fly. I do a lot of the choreo on the fly. And then I just make it until I'm done, basically. I do almost everything in chronological order if I can. But yeah, that's it for today, guys. I had a lot of questions to go through. I hope you guys enjoyed me answering them as much as I could. If I didn't get to your question, I'll go ahead and try to answer it in the Discord. So I'll see you guys there. Um, I hope you guys got a lot out of this. And uh, I want to have more Q&A sessions for the making of in the future as well. So if you guys want to be part of those question rounds, go ahead and join the Discord or follow me on Twitter. And you'll get notifications for when I do those. Um, I really enjoyed this. I want to do them more. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, what I don't know, whatever you guys want to do. And I'll see you guys soon.